you, give you that energy to go into your next round. Yeah, such a friendly face uh, as we saw there on that video. But let's talk about Kai. Let's look at his accomplishments. You know, no mean feat to reach some of those. Yeah, I mean, uh, LAIC, he went out with the, with the Lugia meta, did well with Lugia out there, and then was out there recently um, and played solid solid gameplay. I think that's just the thing with Kai, he's just very solid, but he's going to be playing Mew VMAX, a player who's played Gardevoir for almost a year now. As long as I've seen him since Gardevoir EX came out, he's been playing it. So moving over to Mew is maybe a meta call for today. Well, really interesting. I know that Kai was such a big fan of Mew, uh, in the past, especially last season. You know, we saw that he got the finalist there, unfortunately losing to Philip Schultz uh, at the end of it, but such uh, a big player um, here with Rahul as well. You know, some of those accomplishments. And look at that. Urshifu in Teleon. Unsure how this matchup is going to go uh, for sure, but of course with that psychic weakness on that Urshifu, he's going to be trying to mitigate that threat of the Mew uh, hitting for weakness for sure. Well, typically when we see Urshifu and Teleon, we wonder have they got a, a tech for Mew VMAX or not? There is a tech in here. There is the Spiritomb, which also helps in some other matchups, but it's quite a, a small tech. It might not necessarily uh, work that well because the Mew VMAX that we're seeing on the other side is the Fusion build where the spirit team is slightly less effective there's an ice queue in there to be able to deal with that spirit team but maybe that's the time that's needed to set up that Urshifu and Talion which is an interesting pick here in Gdansk yeah Urshifu I, again we speak oh, no. about how versatile the meta is oh and we see the oh we see the spirit team unfortunately prized for a haul his one out I think in this uh, Mew matchup he's gonna try and have to alter this game plan slightly to try and deal with this Mew uh, and here we see the fist pump, and we're starting with Kai. I mean, that, that spirit tomb is not going to be attainable unless a prize is taken. No heavy ball available. Sometimes would be played in Inteleon because you've got some really important cards like your Medicham, uh, your Alakazam. So we'll see whether that's going to affect them here. But of course, Mew, uh, all about that setup, getting wide as soon as possible. Yeah, no, of course. And we see the Ultra Ball here. You can expect him to be getting that Genesect, starting to draw some cards here. He'll be wanting to set up this Mew to try and deal with the Urshifu as soon as possible. Uh, we see here, getting rid of that Alyssa Sparkle, of course, grabbing the Genesect. And just having that little deck check there is all good players do. Checking his outs, of course, checking how many fusion strike energy may be in the prizes. And he's a raring to go. How important is that prize check for these top players? Oh, so important. Especially in a deck with like Mew, where you have quite fragile counts of cards, like that um, like the fusion strike energy, of course, checking how many outs you have to certain cards, maybe even power tablets as well, also important in this game. Alyssa Sparkle as well, Choice Belt, all of these kind of tech cards. You want to be prize checking uh, as soon as possible to you know, alter your game plan as you play. Well, going nice and wide here, Kai will be able to get the Genesect V engine going. That fusion strike system to help draw up to six, well, up to the amount of uh, Pokemon in play, typically uh, gets up to six when uh, you have a start like this but we'll be trying to draw as many cards as possible to prepare for the next turn. Yeah, explosive start from Kai here, and we see the Forest Seal Stone being used to try and grab that. Well, he did He did take the uh, Battle VRP pass. Optimal start here for Kai, for sure. So just five Pokemon in play, so we'll draw up to that five. Did get a Genesect, but might not want to play it down, as there's only two Mew in play right now. Might need another attack or something like the Ice Cube might need to be available, so might just hold that spot for a little bit here, but able to thin down the hand a little bit with the vacuum. Yeah, he doesn't have the uh, he doesn't have the opportunity to look at the rule prize cards, maybe like we do. But you know, not knowing that the spirit tomb is prized, he's going to be expecting that. I think you know, keeping that bench space open, like you said, for that ice cube. Uh, but you know, having the two mew on board, his two main attackers are rearing to go. We we'll see here a draw and a pass over to Rahul. All right, let's see how well the Inteleon Urshifu deck can set up here. It's one of the biggest challenges of it. You know, you've got the Squawk Billy now that can help you set up faster. But no, in general, that is just can struggle with the consistency, which is why a lot of people tend to avoid it. But when it does set up, it's so powerful. Yeah, for sure. And we see here a little prize check here, just getting rid of the Professor Turo. There, he's not playing against control here, but he is going to be looking for to grab that Inteleon, and here I'd love to see a face cam here where he's realising the Spirit Tomb's prized. 
the one matchup that he needs it, unfortunately. Yeah, it looked like a slight shake of the head there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't want to reveal anything too much. Of course, at this stage, um, knowing the list of your opponents can be a bit tougher. These top players, once they start getting through to round seven, eight, nine, they'll have a friend or they'll know yeah. through a stream game the kind of cards that are in the list. But at this stage, they're not going to know if there's a tech out for, for Mew. So Kai's going to be sitting there wondering, is there a Drapion? Is there a Spiritomb? Is there nothing? And if there is, um, what's the, the game plan for Rahul here? Yeah, and, you know, you talk about the Drapion V, he's not actually playing one. So it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to be dealing with this Mew V Max soon to be coming out from Kai. I would expect him. We see here the Professor Research roaring through that deck. We see a couple of energies there. And just a shuffle of the hand. No Urshifu, no more Pokemon in that hand, unfortunately. And there's a pass over to Kai. Well, that's not a huge amount of setup right there. And if Kai can get things going... There's two Mew VMAX as well. Oh, such a good, such a good start here from Kai. And he's going to really be wanting to capitalize on this poor setup from Rahul. If he's able to find an escape rope with the double turbo energy and also just that one damage modifier required, he's going to be happy. Exactly. And, and you can see right here, the, the setup is wide. The hand is thin. Going to be plenty of draw with the fusion strike system here. Uh, maybe not even an escape rope. You know, there's a chance to to just play for the boss's orders, which there's two of. Um, so, you know, there's lots of ways that this can work out. There's the power tablet. There's the so, power tablet, yeah. I mean, even just taking out the Remoraid is great at this point. Yeah, of course. And with such a poor setup, he's definitely going to be going for uh, the artillery. But we see here an Iono going to be drawing six here. Going to be hoping for that escape rope now to take that knockout on the Inteleon, which is, I would say, definitely... The only threat on Ooh. board for Kai. We see the Kramomatic there. The energy as well. And the energy. This could be it, right? We've got the energy in play now. So an attack is available. I guess the last option is can you take out the Inteleon or do you just stick to the Remoraid? Yeah, of course. And we see here the Genesect draw. Interesting to see. Not getting rid of the Kramomatic, but perfect Kramomatic there with the Battle VRP pass. No longer turn one, so can't use that. So this is so optimal from Kai. And we see the heads as well. You can imagine him. Going through the deck, trying to grab that escape rope. Was it prized? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Or is it there? I think it's just there behind the, the Mew at the front. Mm. Or oh, is that a power tablet? I My think goodness. that was a power tablet. I mean, even just taking out the Remoraid would be great here, but the opportunity to escape rope, there's, there is two in the deck. See here him opting for the lost vacuum. Maybe trying to draw more from this Genesect. So going through the deck, deck checking, yep, definitely not there. <laughs> oh my goodness, well, I mean, this board state is still incredible for Kai just to be fully set up, an attacker on board. The advantage as well of knocking out the Remoraid would be that you'd be able to use an attack like yeah. Max Miracle rather than having to use the Techno Blast, which would limit you the next turn. And interesting to speak of here, he's used the Power Tablet already without knowing that the Escape Rope wasn't in deck. So getting rid of that power tablet is going to be really important here because that Inteleon V is definitely going to be evolving into the V Max, which might be difficult for Kai to deal with. Well, I mean, the Iono could make it tougher, so we'll see what happens. So another Inteleon V going down, Earthen Vessel. But without the Octillery in play, there's not a huge amount of ways to guarantee the cards that you need in the Rapid Strike box. Yeah, he's going to be subject to whatever's in his hand, unfortunately. But we see here the Earthen Vessel, such a fantastic card from this Paradox Rift set. Just looking through the deck, grabbing those two energy. And of course, with that double gunner ability on the Inteleon VMAX, what a partnership. Well, we'll see how the rest of this turn plays out. The part of the peak in play, too, really making things tougher. You know, there's, of course, the, the Squawk ability from last turn would be affected by that path. That's no longer a, a factor. But Inteleon VMAX itself needs its ability, Double Gunner, to be able to start uh, putting some damage in play. But, of course, it's so hard to get through Mew VMAX. You don't have a huge amount of damage output. So it's going to be really tough here for Rahul to, to break down this board. Yeah, for sure. And we see here the evolution into the Inteleon VMAX. I would say quite fortunate to draw into that. Um, I know he plays his outs with the Ultra Ball, but you know he would have been in real, real trouble if he wasn't able to, to evolve there. You mentioned the Turo earlier. Um, some of these uh, kind of decks in the past will play Cheryl as a way to heal your Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, the Turo kind of acts as that now, I guess, as more of a multifunctional uh, tool to be able to, like you said, in, in control 
the matchup to move your Alakazam out of the active? Yeah, I, I think originally with the Inteleon VMAX, with the GMAX Spiral, able to take an energy back into hand once you've used the attack. So it was a partnership made in heaven, really, with the Cheryl, because, of course, you weren't getting rid of any energy when you were using it. Well, let's see how this turn pans out. We see the fusion energy. I wonder if prepping up the Genesex might be a strategy here to start protecting them from if a Spirit Tomb does come down. But at this stage, you haven't seen it, so you'd assume it's not an option. Yeah, of course. Kai's going to be wanting to draw as many cards as possible here. He has used, as I said, the power tablet before he knew of the escape rope. So he's going to be attacking Ooh. here. And of course, was able to use the Psychic Leap attack on the Mu V in the previous turn. So Just using a Max the, Miracle there, it the, seems. Yeah, it looks like the Max Miracle was used there. And the Forest Seal Stone comes down for Rahul, a research comes down, able to finally get that artillery out as well. Anything else in the hand? It's really starting to, to go now for Rahul. It's going to yeah. be a slow burner. Not a huge uh, amount of damage from this Intelli on only 140 at a time. Um, but with the ability to potentially loop it, there's a yeah. chance that you can uh, win a turn back with that yoga loop. You know, 140, 140 puts uh, Mew down to 30 hit points remaining, then that's where you can start to look into using uh, one one of the Intellion double gunners and then follow it up with a yoga loop. Yeah, of course, or even you know attacking here. He's not going to be taking the knockout on the Mew, but low HP Pokemon is where this deck really shines with the Intellion VMAX with that double gunner ability, able to take out those two snipes um, when discarding an energy. And we see the many forest seal stones coming down for both players. Um, of course, Rahul able to use that with the path in play. Got to be really worried about the psychic leap, though. That's always going to be in the yeah. back of your mind. It's, it's going to be in the back of your mind, but I don't think... I think with the evolution on the artillery, he's not going to be able to maybe optimally use the psychic leap play. But here we see that Mu Max now on 280 damage. And Kai just drawing here. And the path is still down. Unfortunately, unable to use this Genesect. Okay, so here we'll see. we see the attachment onto the Mew VMAX. I mean, it's very stable right here for yeah. Kai. It's just now the, the route to victory. Probably a bit unfamiliar with the matchup. Hasn't done it in a while. Yep. Might be thinking, right, what's the plan of action here? How powerful is the Psychic Leap? Is giving them more turns to play with better for them? Do I need to disrupt them? There's all sorts of things to think about. Yeah, of course. And does he even want to use the Power Tablets to start using Psychic Leap, you know? Um, does he want to be saving that to take the big knockout on the Inteleon VMAX on the bench? And here we see a Judge, Judge Path. Tried and tested, I like to call it. You know, asking the question of your opponents, do you have any outs to this play, disrupt, uh, this disruption play? And here we see both players shuffling up. The advantage you got for Rahul, both the Forest, yeah, Seal, the Forest Stones Seal Stones are in play. V-Star is still available, where for Kai, he has used his V-Star, so uh, will be under path for themselves for a while now. Chance for two Kramomatics there, but with a board like this, they don't need to worry about drawing too much for a while because they have plenty of attacks in a row. Even if they integrate a Psychic Leap in there at some point, they will be able to continue attacking. Um, this would be just where you start to wonder what kind of disruption could Rahul do? Maybe uh, is there a chance to, to gust up anything? Um, I'm not quite sure if that's a possibility. I don't think it is. So they can't uh, stall with the Genesect even, which could have been a way to, to play around this path situation. And with that power tablet taking the big knockout on the Intellion VMAX, three prizes. Now for Kai putting him down to two prize cards remaining. Rahul in quite a sticky situation. Doesn't have any energy in hand, no rapid strike energy. Of course, that is his one attachment to be able to use the Intellion VMAX. I don't think there's much going on in that hand. However, is able to use the Forest Seal Stone very smart from Kai, the damage Mew on the bench yeah. here. Not worrying too much about it because typically the Urshifu Intellion doesn't play too many bosses' orders. Uh, I wonder if they'd play counter catches now in some situations. But uh, knowing that it's probably pretty safe on the bench, um, the only way now would be through that double gunner combination with the Medicham, which would be really tough to pull off after a judge path. Yeah, I'm sure Rahul didn't want to use that Forest Seal Stone to try and get out of this situation but he's going to have to. He doesn't like it, but he's going to have to go along with it. The Iono here to six, Kai to two. And of course, oh, Kai drew the out to the part of the peak there as well. Absolutely massive. Oh, my goodness. 
Do we have, we just have an attack here from the Intellion VMAX, so not going to be looking to reach for that loop on this turn. No, of just course. taking it slow. I mean, of course, the Intellion VMAX is big, so it's hard for a new VMAX to get the knockout, but Kai will next turn be able to get involved. I don't think Rahul wants to get rid of this path to the peak, of course, as well. You know, putting Kai down to two, he is going to be at a disadvantage, but here we see the artillery being used. Did have that energy, fortunate enough to draw into it. Wonder what Rahul's going into here. Going through a plan in his mind here. Has the ultra ball in hand as well. More options for him. Unable to use the double gunner, of course. Does want to keep that part of the peak. And here we see Urshifu coming out. And this is fascinating at this point. Like you said, the disruption on a Mew is one of the best ways to counter it. You know, you say, well, if you want to start taking prizes with a path in play, I'll disrupt you when, you, when I know you've got no options unless you draw into it to get back into the game. And at this stage, there is a Mew VMAX in play that can continually attack if there is, uh, if the bench one survives. But it will be so low on hit points here. And this is where you want to see from Kai. He's going to be bumping the path of the peak straight away with the Lost City. A great opportunity now to come back into the game and start drawing some cards up here and really put that pressure back onto Rahul. Yeah, of course. And Rahul definitely going to be going for the six prize card play here with the two damage move VMAX. And here we see Kai, of course, like you said, getting rid of that part of the peak. Does have a switch card in hand. Wondering if he's going to use it, but he's going to manually retreat first before using it. But he's going to be drawing with that Genesec first, of course. Drawing four cards. Okay. Not much going on. Yeah, not much that can be thinned out of the hand there. Some energies that can be attached. I think there was a switch cart in there, but you know, going into the Mew Max with the retreat already means that switch cart can't be removed from hand. Yeah, I think mm. a smart play to the to keep the uh, switch cart, sorry, in hand. I think he doesn't want to be you know bossed and stalled, of course. Does retreat into the Mew course, yeah, just, just going to Psychic Leap there. Psychic Leap. Oh, brilliant play. Brilliant play. Didn't see that coming. And putting out the Genesect, of course, with that switch card in hand as well. Able to bring that Mew VMAX back into play for next turn. I really, really like that play. Yeah, just reset that clock. Give yourself a bit more time. And with that five damage, or the 50 damage on the Inteleon VMAX, will that be enough to put it in range with some power tablets? Well, he does have two left in deck, I believe. And so a choice belt as well. And a choice belt. So that's 90 damage. He does have a Mew V with a Fusion Strike energy on it. He's going to be wanting to maximize those big attacks. So it is possible. So it is definitely possible. Kept the right amount of power tablets in deck. Rahul here just wondering, playing the Arvin, of course. Only support in hand, I believe, for him. Oh, and he has the devolution technical machine. Oh, interesting. Opting out for an item card. And of course now with that path to the peak out of the way, is able to use that double gunner. Yeah, the devolution, that'll be uh, useful in some other matchups. I don't know. Yeah, of course. And maybe come into play here if that Mew um, is close to being knocked out by being de devolved. Um, but I don't know if this is the, the matchup it's for. It's more for those rare candy evolving decks. So definitely a fun win condition for the Urshifu and Teleon deck. Well, I think, actually, with the devolution, he is going to be able to take the knockout on the Mew on the bench. Able to use the Radiant... Opting, oh, yes. Oh, opting for, the, yeah, opting for the double gunner. Okay. So now just he, trying to make sure they get yeah. that knockout, take away energy in play, force yeah. a lot more out, force, force another Mew VMAX sure. into play. So, yeah, it's a, a, not the, the matchup it's designed for, but more of like an unorthodox approach to try and find a, a win condition. Yeah, and then when we talk about this evolution format. The devolution technical machine is so powerful, especially against things like Gardevoir or Charizard, where they're opting to use cards like Rare Candy, of course, and with the GMAX Rapid Flow from the Urshifu, so, so deadly. Well, that Mew VMAX after the devolution will go into Kai's hands. We'll have it ready to evolve the next yeah. Mew and has an energy available too. Um, so I don't know if that's necessarily the, the best option, but at this stage, when you're behind this far, you have to start trying to find uh, unorthodox win conditions, and this is where that experience from a player like Rahul will come through, uh, but can't move it because of the Alakazam. Ah, of course. So we see here... So the, the fusion Ooh. energy there, yeah. um, stopping, stopping the Alakazam's the, stopping the Alakazam. Uh, ability there, moving... 
moving the damage, damage with a painful spoon. Painful so. spoons. Certainly painful. Certainly <laughs> painful. I mean, that's that game plan out the window. Yeah, yeah, of course. Didn't see that coming. But here we see him opting to put down the Urshifu. Rahul, just want to mention there, still on six prizes. But going to be wanting to take these prizes as efficiently as possible with this sort of spread archetype. And here we see the count, cat, uh, the switch card, sorry. Switching out the Genesect. Yeah, good thing. Good thing he held on to it. Doesn't have the VMAX in hand, but does have the power tablet. This is going to be a big, big play from Kai if he's able to take this knockout on the Inteleon. There's the one power tablet, manually attachment, able to optimize his fusion strike systems, drawing up to three here. Going to be looking for discard cards or the Mew Ooh. VMAX, another power tablet as well. But that is a terrible draw there from Kai. Unfortunately, increasing the hand count that bit more, maybe forced to use the Alyssa Sparkle. I mean, if the, if the Mew hadn't gone down, there would have been a chance to use Melodious Echo here and maybe uh, get all four of the, the fusion energy yeah. in play. But, you know, trying to draw for those other outs didn't quite line up. You really want to see Ultra Balls at this stage or Cramomatics to try and thin down that hand. Yeah, and this, is, unfortunately, is the downside of Mew. If you're drawing into these cards, if you're drawing into supporters, battle VIP passes, Nest Balls that you can't use, you see yourself with a big hand that is just effectively useless, right? And mm -hmm. you can't use those fusion strike systems because your hand is maximized to six, of course. Um, and I think we see a fusion strike system for one. This is going to be big. Oh, it's an ultra ball as well. What a top deck there. My goodness, coming through, thinning down that hand. Yeah, getting rid of those two battle VIP passes. This is huge for Kai. Grabbing that Mew VMAX, of course, able to evolve here. Just looking for that one power tablet now. This is going to be a huge fusion strike system. Only one left, Mike. Only one. Well, three cards available off of this next fusion strike system. And it's not even the end then. There's still more time to play with for Kai. But can he win it this turn? Is overreaching the play here. Will those three cards have it? One, Pal pad, two, Nest three. Ball, oh. Ice Q. That's not going to be it. But he will still be able to put some damage on board and keep that tempo going. Yeah. See here the Palpa being used, opting for the Judge. The Elissa Sparkle effectively useless now. No boss, I believe. Will it? I uh, don't think so. Okay, well, we slow it down a bit now. Yeah, slow down just a tad. Got a bit too excited there, Mike. Was I, was close. I was expecting the power table. I've played Kai before. <laughs> He's a hard drawer, let me tell you, sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the way, though. Sometimes you oh, want to try course. and get to that of win course. as soon as possible. But realistically, the, the Mu VMAX deck still has plenty of time. Two prizes remaining for Kai, and still the full six for a haul. Yeah, of course. Uh, still a sticky situation for Kai. Going to be hoping to get that Inteleon off the board if possible or out of the active. If not, He's got a decent hand, uh, hand size there. He's got a Clara. Oh, and here we see the concession from Rahul. No options available to him. And straight into a game two. Well, the spirit tube never came out. No. So as far as Kai is concerned, he's thinking no techs. Yeah, he's going to he's, he's gonna be kind of lucky stars, uh, Kai there. Um, especially when he, <laughs> I'm sure he's going to be replaying this match and go, <laughs> Close call there. Close call. Yeah, well, you can see the, the game plan for Mew doesn't have to be as rushed because the, the yeah. damage output for Inteleon VMAX and Urshifu VMAX is so low. If you put the Urshifu VMAX in play, it does increase the speed at which Mew can win, so they avoid yeah. it. And so consequently, you get a nice slow game where you can take yeah. your time, just play for stability, be a bit disruptive, and just take damage as much as possible each turn. Yeah, no, of course. And we, I can't wait to see this game too now. I'm sure Rahul isn't going to be unlucky enough to prize it twice. You say I, that. Yeah, uh, you say you know, that. I've seen, I've seen weirder stuff on this stream, on these streams, but who knows? And we see our players getting ready for game two. It's, it's so interesting now, I think, with the mind games, right? Because that Spirit Tomb, odds are, is going to be coming out right for Rahul. Interesting to see who's going first as well, of exactly, course. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, we've been having that discussion before, but um, I'm sure being an evolution deck, Rahul probably might be prioritizing going first. And two research no spirit tomb thankfully 
Uh, Some consistency going to be struggling yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Two research, one Karina's focus, so that Octillery isn't going to be grabbing any of those consistency cards we see here. A quick start from Rahul with the Ultra Ball. Quite, I would say, an unfortunate starter in the Ishfu. Very easy to take down, of course, for the Mew with that Psychic Weakness. There is a Psychic Emblem in that bottom left corner, unfortunately, for Rahul and that Ishfu. And we see here an optimal starter in the Mew. Um, Spirit Tomb down straight Spirit away. Spirit Tomb down straight away. Straight away. Well, the, the big question with Kai is, you know, he's got a few Kramomatics in that hand. Yeah. So if they start flipping heads, is there a way around the Spirit Tomb? If not, we could see a very slow turn for Kai. Whereas on the other side, Rahul going fully motor through his deck, getting a Squawk ability. Squawk and seize, <laughs> and we are off to the races. He's raring to go. Uh, the VIP pass there as well. He's going to be looking to, for a quick game too, I think. I think if he's going to take this game down, he needs to, you know, kind of speed it up. Uh, you know, he's going to be wanting to go to a game three to take the win, of course. Um, so, you know, playing optimally here, going for that Squawk ability. Uh, with that Squawk and Seize ability, and we see here two Inteleon coming down. I believe this is going to be really his main attacker in the matchup. Really wants to get that Urshfu out of the active, though. Going to be looking for... Oh, and the Forest Seal! Oh, my goodness. we see here a... Kramomatic, this is going to be big. Unfortunate heads. We see here the nest ball, though. He's going to need a lot here, Kai. He's going to need quite a bit. Yeah, getting tails in the Kramomatic. Does have the forest seal. But, of course, that's... Uh, I mean, the Alyssa Sparkle will probably be the, the key card to get off the forest seal. Put those fusion energy on the Genesex and allow you to draw. But if you can't get the, the board wide, it might not even be possible. Yeah, Spirit Tomb poses such a threat to me. But, you know, I've been in matchups before, especially in our local tournaments, where I put a Spirit Tomb down playing Palkia, I'll play against me, and I'm thinking, this is easy, right? I put this down. Uh, Spirit Tomb, you know, taking the mitigation out of the way with that Fettered in, misfor uh, fettered in Misfortune ability. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> Mew, Mew decks can just get out of it. And we see here the Forest Seal Stone with the Iono. Um, you know, we're all going to be a bit disappointed, but here we see some draws. Oh, oh, lots of basics, at least. Yeah, rough draws there. He's going to be hoping this Mew sticks around for a little while. We see here the Nest Ball. Uh, going to be opting, hopefully, for the ice. I, I would say the ice cube, right? He's got the Ultra Ball in hand, so the Mew V Max can come out to play, but he's going to be opting for a Mew here. Very interesting. Yeah, I guess next turn we'll be able to potentially attack with the ice cube. At yeah. this stage, just trying to set up a stable board state, because even like we said before, there's a lot of time in this matchup for Mew. You do have the ability yeah. to, to go a bit slower, so without the draw, you do just have to kind of set up in preparation for when you can draw once those fusion energy come down. Yeah, Rahul's not doing huge damage straight away. I think that's that's what Kai's going to be hoping. Uh, you know, he can have some... Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, and, of course, the fusion strike system to put... I didn't see that in hand. So what happened there was the Genesect, fusion, yeah. fusion strike system with the fusion energy on, one card, battle VIP pass. Huge. Absolutely huge. We've all seen that before. Ah. Oh. Who, who better than Kai, right, to draw that? <laughs> we see here the Mew V and the Genesect down on board. So that one Fusion Strike system is going to be active. I didn't even see that in hand. I can't believe I missed that. that but was, it was, see... Yeah, I mean, obviously at this stage, these players playing as fast as possible yeah, to make sure we get a result out. Um, and, you know, this is the skill of these top players. They are able to play at a pace whilst making as few mistakes as possible. Um, and you can see that a great example of that right now. But that is the dream start, considering yeah. Spiritomb was down and the limited draw was there and the chance to use Iono to disrupt a little bit. You know what? You have your Spiritomb. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, keep it, you keep it on board, I'll just draw the six, it's fine. I, I just need the one fusion stock system, it's okay, whatever, it's fine. And here we see Rahul using that earthen vessel. I absolutely love this earthen vessel card. It's I great. think it's so, so good. And we see here the Ishfu is still inactive. He's going to be wanting to maybe draw into a Tower of Waters. Uh, if he's able to get the artillery, of course, able to guarantee that. But here we see a double gunner, quick double gunner from the Inteleon VMAX. And here we see the Melanie, such great synchronization with these cards. And here we see the artillery coming down as well, able to get the Tower of Waters, but unfortunately doesn't have, didn't, wasn't able to attach a Rapid Strike energy there. So isn't going to be able to attack this turn, I don't believe. Was that Melanie? Oh, no, of course, it was the Melanie, Melanie of course. Attachment. Yeah, of course. And here we see another double going coming down. I think there was an Earthen Vessel in hand as well. So Rahul, you know, off to the races. This is a respectable start from Rahul here. 
in consideration of what we believed was a bad matchup. Yeah, I do believe it's a tougher matchup, especially when your spirit team is a as ineffective as it was last turn against Kai setting up. You yeah. know, that's that is your main way to try and beat uh, Mew is disrupt them early on, make it as hard for them as set up as possible. And uh, when it's when it's a game like this, you you think if I can't win now then this is just a tough matchup. You know, yeah. like I've set up perfectly. I've done everything I need to do. I've got my Intellion V Max, got the Spirit Team down from the start. And if I can't win here, then it is what it is. It is what it is. And you see uh, the Forest Seal Stone coming down, drawing up to six here with that one Genesect, manually attaching the double colorless energy. And we see here as well, the new V Max coming into hand. So is going to be able to attack this turn. Probably would have hoped for a boss there. Definitely isn't going to be going for the knockout on this Inteleon V Max with all of his damage modifiers available to him. Tempo initiated here by Rahul, yeah. though. The first a swing of 140 came through from Rahul last turn. So that does mean the Psychic Leap might have to happen earlier or the retreat and set up the next attacker. So it yeah. puts the pressure on Kai here to try and set up as fast as possible. This time, getting the double turbo energy on the active. You know, the fusion energies might be saved now for the Genesex instead this time. And uh, we'll see how that affects the game. But the Spirit Team in play is still disrupting the draw ability. You know, there's not, no longer three Genesect drawing, just the one. Just the one, yeah. And here we see a Judge as well, disrupting Rahul's hand. But I think Rahul's pretty comfortable here. You know, he's got the artillery up and running. He's got the one energy on the Intellion. You know, he's more than likely going to be able to draw out against this here. So here we see Kai as well. I mean, the tougher hands, you'd yeah. use the Octillery to get the Karina's focus. Yeah. Whereas we saw one of them prized. So I believe there is two in the list. So there should be an opportunity to get another one if needed. That's also your little get out of jail free when you've yeah. got an Octillery in play the, for the Rapid Strike. The Octillery is fantastic in these types of situations, right? Because, you know, you're going to get Rock Sand, you're going to get Iono, you're going to get judged in these competitions. You know, disruption is such a big part of this game at the moment. And here we see Rahul drawing here. I think that was a energy retrieval in hand as well, just making sure that the damage is right there. And here we see the energy retrieval coming out. The double gunners both active here. And where they're going. And they're going as well. They're up and running. Oh and my. here we see both on the Muse. Well, you we mentioned about the fusion energy going on the Genesect. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say, really interesting, right? Because, of course, he's going to be opting to attach these fusion strike energies to his Genesect, but of course, Without attaching them to the Muse, they're going to be affected by that Radiant Alakazam that Rahul has. Not in play yet. Not so in play yet, no. That's the disadvantage of having Squawkabilly. Yeah. Takes up a bench spot. But this is uh, a great hand and a research there as well, just to start fresh. And, you know, there's so many great cards to draw into off of a research with this deck. And one of them being Forest Sealstone. Such a great consistency card in the list that have a limited engine. You know, Octillery is your only real mid-game, late-game engine for the, the Rapid Strike. So having the additional Forest Seal yeah. on top, saving it, banking it, can be a massive benefit. Yeah, of course, both players have the option to use their Forest Seal Stones, but opting to use it at a more efficient time, right? So they're going to use it more effectively. They maybe have a game plan in mind. I'm going to use my Forest Seal Stone here if I have to. However, I'm going to be saving it for that big name play uh, when required. And just getting the Rapid Strike Energy on that Inteleon there, was able to use the Artillery there for that energy. And here we see another 140 damage coming down on the Mew VMAX. That is huge. That Mew now, 30 hit points remaining. Yeah. Dangerous times for Kai, for sure. Here we see the Palpad coming down. I think I saw two Battle VRP Pass in hand for Kai. Uh, quite unfortunate. Draws there off his own judge, believe it or not. That was his judge. This is your idea, Kai. <laughs> you played the judge. This was your idea. <laughs> well, Mew loves a disrupted game because they know they can draw out of it. But it does get tougher when the Spirit Tune's in play. And at this stage, you are wondering, is this the game plan that Rahul has planned for? You know, Spirit Tune in play, slow him down and just keep attacking with Inteleon VMAX, making it as hard as possible. You know, you've got that Turo in there to reset one of the yeah. Inteleon VMAX if you need to. So you can really delay the game. Both, uh, both players having the ability to reset the damage on their VMAXs makes this an interesting matchup because it can go a lot further than you expect. Totally agree, totally agree. And we see here the two... Power tablet come down. Thank you, Rahul, for getting them back out of the discard pile. <laughs> Didn't see, I was unsure if he played one or two, but here we see 
the escape rope. Oh, this is such a two. Easy two prizes here for Kai, right? The Skorka Billy, only 160 damage. Um, and I'm expecting to see the boss here, really, from Kai on that Inteleon VMAX. I think I did see the boss in hand yet. Yeah, there is the boss. Love that artwork as well, the Getsis. Repping the Getsis. If you, if you were to play boss, which boss would you play, Mark? So I'm a bit of a, <laughs> um, an OG. I like Lysander. I feel uh, like yeah. he deserves the, the rep. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> I like the Cyrus myself, but, you know, it's whatever. Big knockout there, though. The VMAX being taken out, the one with damage on. So now three prizes remaining for Kai. And not only was that a knockout, but it was a psychic leap yeah, knockout. That was big. That was big, for sure. And here we see Rahul now in front of him, really relies on having damage being spread across the board. And now with that Mew VMAX gone, um, this is going to be really where Rahul starts to alter his game plan. He's playing a deck where he does need to be really flexible. So it's going to be interesting to see how he, how he uh, comes about this now. I wonder when, when he told all his friends, he's like, I'm going to be traveling over to Europe. And, and then they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. When you go out there, just make sure you watch out for it. Do you reckon any of them said Mew VMAX? Because yeah. it's kind of a bit of a joke now, isn't it? The Americans yeah. find it hilarious that we, <laughs> we have so much Mew VMAX over here. And this is the exact scenario they're all worried about. Well, it's so funny because, you know, we know we're all such a big fan of Regigigas. I thought he would have been repping his boy, but unfortunately not. Coming up with the... Inteleon at Urshifu. Funny story, actually. My first world, my first round one was against Venomoth. And I was like, you made worlds and you're playing Venomoth? This is crazy. But, you know, we're having fun here. We're having fun out here. Yeah, I mean, exactly that. And I think it's a great pick into what we saw the meta share earlier on. You know, Maridon's a strong matchup because of the Urshifu weakness. Yeah. And you've also got uh, Gardevoir being very popular. So you've got the ability to loop on those smaller evolving Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you've, you've just got a solid matchup into all of the evolving meta right now. Shen Pao, Charizard. Yeah. You can win against all of them as long as you get set up. Yeah, we spoke about the TM Devolution, talking about Evolution uh, being a topic just coming out there for Rahul. But opting for the Medicham, interesting also, choice. Entei as well, my goodness. Yeah, of course. I hadn't even thought about Why that. Not? The, yeah, two, yeah, the yeah. two best decks from uh, LAIC, both of them beaten by weakness from your two attackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we see Rahul just... You can expect him to be altering his game plan, like I said here. The double gunner is still active, has that one energy in hand. I don't think he has any energy retrievals in hand, so it's only the one double gunner is available, but opting to keep that in hand. And the 140 damage coming down on the Mew here as well. It's now on 200 damage taken, yeah. so the 110 remaining, which is in range of the next double gunner. I'm really interested to see how Kai approaches this now in terms of prize mapping, right? Because he's got Spiritomb on his opponent's side of the field. He's taken his three prizes already. The Skorka Billy's on the bench. So, you know, there's three easy prizes there. And we see here the Ultra Ball for the Ice Q coming down as well. I'd expect to take that knockout on the Spirit Team, like I said. So now Kai, if he's able to take that knockout, only a boss away from taking this game. Well, there is the Fusion Energy in hand, but I believe needs to try and power up the active. So would, in order to get that Fusion Energy in play, needs to get an Alyssa Sparkle. Yep. Uh, otherwise, won't be able to get the Ice Q in range. But maybe the double turbo, and just on this occasion, taking the knockout on the Squawker Billy might be the correct yeah. correct play. But a bit of draw still as a chance now to find that optimal route. And I think, you know, pre playing the Professor Turo from uh, Rahul's list as well, I think, you know, discarding it early on, this might come up trumps here. You know, he would have been able to take down a, uh, a easy two prizes for Kai on the board. But unfortunately, with the Urshville on the bench as well, being weak to me, of course, you know, this is unfortunately something you can't quite mitigate. And the second uh, Fusion Strike energy coming down on the Genesect, of course. So a Fusion Strike system also in the active as well. One of his active abilities. And here we see what I imagine. On the active. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Genesect allows for the more draw, which is great at this stage. Um, that Mew in the active will likely get knocked out next turn by the Inteleon VMAX. So that Fusion Energy will be removed from play. Yeah, interesting to see how he deals with this now, I think. And the Ultra Ball coming down. I expect another VMAX to come down, maybe, or unless he wants to keep that Psychic Leap active on that Mew. But coming down with that VMAX here as well. As I said, shuffle up the deck. 
I'm really interested to see how this match plays out, actually. I, I... Yeah, it's fascinating now, because if this knockout comes through, it's not a, a guaranteed next turn knockout for Kai. No, no. So if there's some disruption involved, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to think about. Yeah, big three cards here. If he's able to find one of the pieces to the puzzle, there's an Avery. Definitely doesn't want to be playing that, otherwise that, otherwise that score for Billy's gone. All the issue, of course. And the Vitality Band, pretty, pretty interesting choice. Extra 10 damage? Yeah, extra 10 damage. Just the one in there, so I'm guessing the uh, 230, hitting 230 will be quite useful. Hitting the 230 against Ente, right? Ente against Iron Hands. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Against um, Roaring Moon as well. Yeah, and that's a great example of what we were talking about. Such a versatile meta. What do you play? What, what, what are you thinking you're playing up against? What do you prioritize in terms of tech cards? So here we see Kai choosing the Vitality Band, and here we see a pass over to Rahul. Taking yes, it the also allows on the Spiritum, of course. Meloetta. Yeah, hit, two, hit 220 if you get the first turn attack. Yeah, 220 is such a great number um, in this current format. A lot of these basic Vs hitting that 220 to 30 mark. And here we see the knockout on the Spirit Tomb, putting Kai only a boss away from taking this matchup. Two prize remaining. Similar story to the first game. Six for Rahul to take. And just the two for Kai. The Spirit Tomb has been removed, so the draw should be available. And we wonder what the strategy is for Rahul. Rahul has got the, the Clara there. Maybe trying to get that Spirit Tomb back and some energy to start the the double gunners but this is where we start to wonder what can you do at this stage to really slow down Kai in these final moments yeah Kai must be pretty disappointed here <laughs> seeing the spirit <laughs> come right back Ugh. not okay. again not well, he's again got, he's got the two fusion You're energy joking. in play not now again. <laughs> he, he can still draw with those two Genesec there so should be fine but of course this active new VMAX is going to be knocked out and that leaves Kai in a position where it needs to find a way to set up the next one yeah, double kind of coming down as well for Rahul. It's going to be so difficult for Rahul here to take the game, able to take the knockout on the Mew VMAX, but of course now Kai only one boss away, like I said, for a knockout on the Squawker Billy or the Urshifu. And you would think an easy two prizes here, opting to promote the Ice Q. Okay. Benched, does have the escape rope in hand, able to get rid of one card in hand. But yeah, that fusion energy being on the active Mew VMAX might come back to bite him. There was the Mew on the bench that could have gone on to, so this turn it would have just required the one energy attachment, yeah. uh, which is in hand, so that could affect them here. And we really needs to dig for that final double turbo energy in the deck. Yeah, we speak about awkward hands. Fusion strike energy doesn't want that. Iono ugh, doesn't want to be playing that either. Ops to play it, of course, isn't going to be hoping to draw into the boss naturally with the Fusion Strike systems, opting for his only opportunity here, putting Rahul down to three cards, but of course does have that Octillery as an option, and of course with Oh, the there it is. And here's the power. Oh, oh brilliant. My goodness, off of the Iono, gets the double turbo energy, a knockout on the Octillery here will leave one prize remaining to win the game, which could be dealt with through that Ice Q, as mentioned before, or the boss the same way described before. Yeah, fantastic for Kai here. Op taking out not only a consistency option here for Rahul, of course, if he's going to be taking the knockout on the artillery here, if Rahul's drawn into a pretty unfortunate three cards, it puts him in a real awkward position going forward. Well, he does take the boss there in preparation for next yeah, turn. Yeah. Why not? He's confident. There's also potential for a stadium. He's just thinking here, if I get the Lost City down, will that help me out? You know, perhaps the Lost City was the strategy last turn when they uh, got the Spirit Team, but of course, not too worried about that. We've seen all the draw this turn. Yep. Fusion Energy is really helping out here. So we now have the Mew VMAX, which can survive another turn. Well, I think if he puts down the Lost City uh, and gets rid of the, uh, the Tower of Water, he is able to just use Block Slider and go, well, you know, do you have an out to this? Do you, do you have a switch card? Because now it's a really awkward position for Rahul. Now, what does he use his artillery for? Is he going to get another Tower of Water? But, or is he going to is he going to bank on drawing into a switch option? You know, this is really really interesting play for you from Kai. And Kai's going to have to use Techno Blast here. Nothing else will knock out the artillery no. uh, unless they go for the Ice Q this turn. Yeah. This uh, aiming for the Spirit Tomb. Yeah. Um, so there's there's lots of things to think about. So, what's the final game plan here for Kai? The well. I think if he's unable to take the knockout on the... Oh, he's passing. Oh, he's passed. Interesting. OK. And here we see <laughs> Rahul naturally draw that tower of waters. That's fine. And here we see the Iono play as well. 
Michael Kay just accepting that the keeping the two prizes remaining and going for the Squawker Billy will be the safer option or the Urshifu. And just not having to worry about the, the Spirit Team at this stage. But yeah, the, this is those final stages. There's, there's, there's multiple routes that Kai could go to victory here. Doesn't want to go down to one prize just in case no, yeah. the it, Iona it, comes through. It would have meant that Iona would have been so effective. But I think he's okay with the two Genesects being uh, active with the two Fusion Strike energies. And here we see an Earthen Vessel coming down from Rahul. I think just worried about uh, the, the Techno Blast leaving the mm. Mew VMAX in the active after getting disrupted. Uh, doesn't have to worry about that now. Um, but you've also got to think, well, if they went for the Spirit Tomb, they would have been able to attack the next turn still anyway. Um, so lots, lots of decisions to, to think about. And that's why you see these top players, they're worried about disruption. That's one of the, yeah. the key differences with top players right now compared to your average player playing the TCG. The top players can really think through the bad, worst case scenarios of disruption. Well, there's so many options for players, right? There's so many options to play a disruptive uh, method, right? You've got Iona, you've got Roxanne, you've got Judge, you've got Path. There's so many different options and players really have to mitigate against that game plan going into these, uh, going into these tournaments. Okay, so we'll have the power tablet, plenty of cards to play in hand. Didn't draw the on. Ultra Ball as well, available. No, I didn't draw naturally into the boss. Uh, the power tablet does come down. Lost zoning that lost city. Here we see the switch cart coming down as well. Really going to be hoping to see that boss, of course, like we said earlier. Likely can draw through the whole deck here yeah, with, yeah. with the three Genesects available and the Ultra Ball still in hand to Thin. Yeah, if you played me before, you know how thin your decks can get with so many cards to play. There it is. And there's the boss for game. And that's it, boss's that's orders easy. onto the Squawker Billy Techno Blast for the knockout. And that will be a clean 2-0 victory for Kai into the Urshifu Intalion of Rahul Ready. Able to take that boss from this Susan Strike system. Such an easy two prize cards, like I said, on the Squawker Billy. Kai playing that so well. Amazing. In the face of adversity, in the face of Spirit Tomb, just saying, you know what? You can keep that. I'm just going to draw out of this, and I'm going to, I'm going to take the win. We mentioned beforehand about which type of new VMAX we we're going to see, and how the Fusion version definitely able to deal with the Spirit Tomb. And you saw exactly why there. Once you get those Fusion energy onto the Genesect, it almost feels like the Spirit Tomb isn't even in play. And yeah. of course, at the end there, keeping those options available, keeping the boss in deck available for the final knockout. But unfortunately for Rahul comes in with a deck targeting the meta and comes across the one deck you do not want to be seeing. Yeah, unfortunate for Rahul, of course, prizing that Spirit Tomb in the first game, but it came up not really that effective in the second game, you know? It, it's a question of whether the Drapion would have been more effective, but I guess the Spirit Tomb does mitigate against other matchups, you know, yeah. 